Well, these ball bearings um, represent iniquity, and how now I'm going to be looking uh, through um, a brief study of the scriptures of the heart, mind, will of the Lord, the Lord God. We're going to be looking at how it's been revealed, the spiritual nature of what causes iniquity, and then we're going to look at the physical aspects from life and the holy scriptures. So we're looking at um, these ball bearings just represent people, uh, pride, uh, systems in the world, kings, governments, powers, uh, whether that's uh, you know in groups of family groups, uh, communities, nations, uh, commercial world, the media, Hollywood, all, all, all the world's activities on, on the global stage of uh, the Lord's creation. I'm going to found a scripture this morning I was uh, reading and it was a prophecy given to Moses just before he died regarding uh, what was in the hearts, how the Lord knew what was in the hearts because he, he knew it's his creation and all things are before him, all things are in his hand and he gives the account of uh, the fallen angel Lucifer and we have the account of the garden of the serpent how the, the devil took up um, a serpent and uh, deceived Eve, he deceived Adam and, and fall and they fell away from the commandment that God gave them and they were disobedient and sin entered the world and into the human genome and the pattern of behaviour of sin uh, which is anything other than living the right way according to God's heart, mind and will uh, having that law in, in, in the hearts and in, in the complete lives of, of people because of sin it's the opposition to righteousness, it's the opposition to the, the good things that people want to do because they have sin and they compromise and weak and they fall and uh, we're looking at the building up of that iniquity and we, seen, we saw that in uh, the Tower of Babel how they all wanted to be all one one mass, one one lump of people, and then have one person rule over everyone else. One person be the king of the castle. Uh, so I'm going to read a scripture. Now this surprised me um, because in the days of uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, in the when uh, Israel was at its peak, or in the peak of it, an apostas apostasized way, how they strayed from the law. But how there was uh, the way was prepared, and there were people along the way expecting the law, and there were people right out the way, part of the apostasy. So we we'll be looking at the Lord's heart, mind, and and will regarding His people, and seeing into the right through to the the end from the beginning, and He's speaking to Moses. Now it, it surprised me that that in the days of, in the time of Christ, how the people, the, the, the Jews, uh, the uh, fact, the doctors of the law, or the Pharisees and the Sadducees, um, have gone, it, it shows how, how far out of the way they'd gone from tradition, how Babylonian traditions and the world's iniquity had crept into the tr tribe of Israel so they were doing things their own way and they missed the coming prophet, the promised seed, the, the Messiah and they rejected the Messiah and and this is, we're looking at uh, the, the state of uh, the Jews at, at that time, they had a high priest and had the, all the law, all the, all the secret, they had their secret police and even Caesar next door, the camp next door was also set up in iniquity, you know, he's the head of the world, he wanted to rule the world. And then we have uh, right next, you know, camped under his wing, was a prisoner, was Israel, who were also raised up in this iniquity. So we have two big masses of iniquity side by side. 
and both rejected the both rejected the uh, Messiah and uh, the consequences followed and continue to follow. So it's a surprise to me that the 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 Jews of that day uh, and 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 the Jews today who profess to hold to the Word and love the Word of God and uh, they they overlook what the Lord's already written and they missed this uh, this this scripture. And I'm just going to read uh, from Deuteronomy chapter 31, and it's Moses' uh, last council, but just before he dies, to uh, the priest, the Levite priest, and, and Joshua, who would, who would take his place to lead the chosen seed into the promised land. And we're going, going to start in um, uh, verse 14, so... Jehovah. Now, Jehovah's the messenger sent from the Father. We know we know that it's the Lord Jesus Christ, because um, the angel of the Lord appeared to Moses face to face in the cave uh, when when the Lord buried him in in a cave, and he passed by him, and and Moses saw his face. Now we know from the Holy Scriptures that the, the Scriptures can't be broken, so we know that that wasn't the face of the Almighty God, the Father, that was the Lord Jesus Christ. He saw the face of the Lord. And so the Father sent Jehovah, the the Son, to Moses, and, and Moses appeared in, a, in the tabernacle in a pillar of a cloud. Um, before Moses and it's on, on several uh, accounts and then later on he sh showed uh, Moses' his face as he passed by in a cloud and Moses saw the face of the Lord on several occasions we know that the Lord in this verse is the, the Father speaking through the, the Son uh, the Lord Jesus Christ and um, I'm going to start in verse 14 and the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thy days approach that thou must die. Call Joshua and present yourself in the tabernacle of the congregation, that I may give him a charge. And Moses and Joshua went and presented themselves in the tabernacle of the congregation. And the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, appeared in the tabernacle in a pillar of a cloud. And the pillar of the cloud stood over the door of the tabernacle. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, and this people will rise up and go a-whoring after the gods of the strangers of the land. Whether they go to be among them, and will forsake me, and break my covenant which I have made with them. Then my anger shall be kindled against them in that day, and I will forsake them, and I will hide my face from them, and they shall be devoured, and many evils and troubles shall befall them. So that they will say in that day, Are not these evils come among us, because our God is not among us? And I will surely hide my face in that day for all the evils which they have wrought, in that they have turned unto other gods. Now therefore write ye this song for you, and teach it the children of Israel, Put it in their mouths, that, that this song may be a witness for me against the children of Israel. For when, I for when I shall have brought them into the land, which I swear unto their fathers, that floweth with milk and honey, and they shall have eaten and filled themselves, and waxed fat, then will, they, uh, then will they turn unto other gods, and serve them, and provoke me, and break my covenant. And it shall come to pass, when many evils and troubles are befallen them, that this song shall testify against them for, as a witness, for it shall not be forgotten out of the mouth of their seed. For I know their imagination which they go about even now. Behold, I have brought them into the land which I swear. Moses therefore wrote this song the same day, and taught it the children of Israel. And he gave Joshua the son of Nun a charge, and said, be strong and of good courage, for thou shalt bring the children of Israel into the land which I swear unto them, and I will be with thee. So we see that the uh, the Lord um, 
appears a few days before uh, Moses is about to die and he gives his heart that the the seed of Israel will go whoring after other gods and we know and, and we know through prophecy and history that 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 happened um right up until the the arrival of Christ and Christ found Israel in that state on that day um and it's also speaking all the, the Lord speaking of what's in man's heart not only at that peak but at the peak at the end uh, the, the the great tribulation so we're looking at a prophecy here the Lord speaking of all what what's going to be a, re, a recurring theme and then that recurring theme is going to come to a head and it's going to break uh, so we have there the, the Lord's heart mind and will I'm going to read from Isaiah chapter 14. Now, we're going to be looking at the, the spiritual, which is which is Satan. And of, because Satan is temporary by default, because of man's rejected God, by default, Satan becomes the power, the prince of the chief principality temporarily on this earth. And it's him that caused it, that, and through the, the sin nature of man and the power of Satan behind that, we have iniquity, we have injustice, we have these establishments set up like ball bearings because they're out of the way, they've rejected the sun. Let me read Psalm 2 before we get to Isaiah. Um, Again, another prophecy in the Psalms. The Lord speak, uh, you know, Why do the heathen rage, and the people imagine a vain thing? This is Psalm 2. The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord, and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder, and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh, the Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath, and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree, the Lord have said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear, and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way, when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that shall that put their trust in him. So I have a prophecy there of, of the Lord being rejected, all the kings of the earth setting themselves up against the Lord and then the victory of the Lord's atonement on the cross and then the, the victory over that iniquity realised and the warning of the earth to repent, kiss the sun, kiss the sun, capital S. That's, that's referring to the, the promise of the Lord, um, Isaiah cha chapter 9 and many other prophecies of the, the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ coming to fulfill prophecy and establish the new and everlasting covenant which is the the completion of the law which is love and all these establishments are against the lords and and they want the anyone who speaks up for the truth removed from the earth um we read psalm chapter 12 Help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth. Excuse me. For the faithful fail from among the children of men. They speak vanity, every one with his neighbour. With flattering lips and with a double heart do they speak. Two faced. The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaketh proud things. Who have said, With our tongue we will prevail? Our lips are our own, the Lord. Who is Lord over us? For the oppression of the poor, 
For the sighing of the needy, now will I rise, saith the Lord. I will set him in safety from him that puffeth at him, puffeth at him. The words of the Lord are pure words. As silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation for ever. The wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. So we see in this repeat, repeating theme of iniquity, rejecting the Lord, rejecting the, the Creator, rejecting the Almighty for their own God. Every, like the prophecy, it says that the the words of the Lord are refined in the earth and pure as silver, refined as silver. And they're consistently, if you read all the, the Old Testament, all the Proverbs, all the, all the wisdom in the scriptures that's lived through these people's lives, the seed of Israel, we see that uh, the Lord is consistently true to his word. He's consistently wise, full of all knowledge. And this has been always been on the earth. It's mankind that, that denies this. It's, it's mankind that tries to rob the Lord of the glory and it sets itself up in glory and it wants the focus to be on, on the one. And, and you'll see this, uh, the one, oh, you know, through the media of the world, through the, all, all the collective media, all, all magazines, TV programmes, you know, there's these, these subliminal, subliminal uh, suggestions that... Uh, how Satan works through to appeal to that sin nature. Oh, you're the you can. It's your life. What do you want to do with your life? You know what do you want to be when you grow up. Oh, you you're the one. You you know. All all this um, crafting of the self of the the raising up of the self in the image of the world, which is raised up because of Satan. Right, I'm going to read chapter Isaiah chapter fourteen. <laughs> Excuse me a minute. Um, yeah, uh, it's Isaiah chapter 14. Um, I'm going to read the whole chapter because it shows um, the fall of Lucifer and how Lucifer works through the, the nations and it's referring to the, Babylon, the Babylonian nation. So we're looking at um, two things here. The physical Babylon the Pal and Palestinian the the, uh, the fallen Babylonian princes and the uh, th that seed line I think that would be inclusive of um, Ishmael and the Arabs and but it's also a, ref a reference to that spiritual Babylon the the mystery Babylon of the world that's the um, book of Thessalonians says that, that iniquity has already worked from the beginning. We're looking at this spiritual force throughout history, throughout every nation, throughout every individual, throughout every kingdom that's been established and set up on the earth because of the, re the rejection of the way. So we're going to look, Isaiah chapter 14 is uh, the Lord revealing many prophecies of, of through through his uh, prophet Isaiah in, written down and recorded in the Holy Scriptures. So Isaiah chapter 14. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. So that's a, a prophecy and will yet choose Israel. So he's already chosen Israel so he will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. So that's a double plan for what the Lord had in mind. So he knew that he would put, um, as I started the scripture in Deuteronomy, that the, the seed of Israel and Moses is de departing and Joshua was to lead the seed into the promised land of Israel after the 40 years in the wilderness and the the sifting of the wheat from the chaff and then and finally the the seed went into uh the chosen seed entered into the land and conquered the land from the river you know from egypt right up to 
the river Euphrates and the Lord gave that portion of that part of the earth, his creation, to that, to his inheritance, to his seed, his promised seed. And they took the land. But this, uh, the verse 1, is yet a bringing them back into the land. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land and the stranger shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. So that's the first time they were entered in. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of the Lord shall possess them in... Uh, the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for the servants and handmaids, and they shall take them captives, whose captives they were. So this is the Lord restoring Israel um, to the land, and them taking captives of those who they were in captivity to. So the Lord's turning the tables in the land, and, and this is parallel with uh, Joel chapter 3. For the servants and handmaids, and they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. And it shall come to pass in that, in in the day of that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow, and from thy fear, and from thy hard bondage, wherein thou was made to serve. Then thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon. Now, if you listen to all the rhetoric today. The, uh, and if you if you, if you, if you do your study uh, of the pro elder, the protocols of the elders of Zion, which was a, a paper that fell into the hands of government officials, of a of a, of a conspiracy, and we read in Psalm two that the what is in these rulers' hearts is a conspiracy. Maybe it's not a conspiracy where they're all sitting around the table, but it, it's a spiritual uh, desire. And, and it's an ambiguous desire that all these nations share. And it's a cons that, that conspiracy is against the Lord and is anointed. And that sets up these, uh, uh, these kingdoms and this wickedness in men's hearts. And uh, it says here, Thou hast taken up this proverb against the king of Babylon. So the king of Babylon is is whoever is the head of the leader of the world, the one person in the world holding the power. Now my suggestion for today would be the king of that Babylon would be the, the Roman Catholic order, the church being the king of Babylon. Um, but it's also a, the spiritual power behind that, which is Lucifer. That, you know, so there's Lucifer, the, the fallen power, and his heart is in the the physical realm, in the physical power of the heart, and it's speaking to. It's speaking. The Lord's speaking of both, but it's referring to the king of Babylon. Thou shalt take up the heights. This vain wickedness in men's hearts, and that blinkers people, and that blinds people from the truth, and that causes always causes, and a depression for other people. There's always a massive, fallout and of people suffering as a consequence to wickedness and it's no different throughout time and history time and time and time again this iniquity is, lives out itself within the hearts of whoever takes it up who, whoever is out of the way is somewhere in, in, in that pile or under that pile pushed down in the pit you know in the great, in the great press of, 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 the, of the wicked the whole earth is at rest, and the quiet, they break forth into singing. Yea, the fir trees rejoice in thee, and the, seed, the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Since thou art laid down, no fellow has come against us. So, hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It have raised up from the thrones all the kings of the, nation, of the nations. And thou shalt speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? So that's talking about all the falling, all the failing of of, of the Antichrist, of the nations that follow the Antichrist and, and the, the spirit of the Antichrist, which is in that iniquity in their hearts, in the, in the kingdoms, and who they are aspiring to be like, who their God is. Now, some of these people actually um, conjure spirits. They've actually seen 
uh, Lucifer in many different guises because he's an angel of light. He's in a he's a super imposter. He can uh, many he's got many disguises and he can appear in many manifestations to deceive whatever society or group of people he wants to reach. He we he will play his deception up individually based on what is in that individual's heart whether that's religion whether that's uh, political whether that's uh, whatever the aspiration is it, it it's him um him working through those hearts so hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming it stirreth up the dead for thee even all the chief ones of the earth it have raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. All they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vials and worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Now we speak now. The Lord is speaking f through men into the spiritual realm, which, you, which the world doesn't see or doesn't acknowledge. So the Lord has put below in the earth um, like a prison, um, a covering, a force field, a veil, and he's locked these spiritual entities inside it. But there's people on the earth that worship and break and they push through that and raise up. So we've got the spiritual forces and desire underneath this veil. And then we've got the wickedness of men's hearts who are raising, who are, who are entertaining this spirit in so many different forms and guises. So we've got this spiritual force going on underneath the undercurrent. And it's working through men's hearts. So it could be um, a purposeful, calculated conspiracy by a few men, a few nations' heads. Or it, and, and, and that works on an ambiguous conspiracy of what, how all the different deceptions, how all the different lies. People live lies, so they, they have an impression on the world and create a deception, which is this spiritual heart, this spiritual force working. And people all look to the image. Oh, what, that's what I want to become. That's what I want to do. And if you can't do that, you're put down. You're a failure. You're a loser. You know. So there's this carrot on the stick, the pride of life, hung up by Satan, and it raises people up to have a bite of the carrot. And everyone, and and that leaves everyone on the table. Well, do you? You've either got a choice. You you have no part in it, or you're lumped to it. And you want to raise up and climb to the top for the carrot. There can only be one. There can only be one winner. You know, there can only be one, you know, like, you see it in the world, you know, you can, there's only one uh, pop idol, there's only one football champion, there's only one gold medalist, you know, there's only one, there's only one, there's only one. And that one is Lucifer. And he's going to come in the physical, and this is what, this is referring to the spiritual and the physical. The times where he's entered into the heart of a man and he's raised up a kingdom, a Babylonian kingdom, a Syrian kingdom, an Egyptian pharaoh, or, or the kings and the, the, the rulers of today's nation in each different uh, country and state. We all, we, all, we all see this spiritual force working through men. And it's... Um, the spiritual as well as the physical manifestation. So the Lord in verse 12, speaking now of the spiritual. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground? How didst thou weaken the nations? I believe this is speaking of the Antichrist, Lucifer, taking up the son of perdition, in, in the tribulation period where he uh, this um, antichrist figure comes and conquers all the nations and all the nations give him allegiance and he rules all those ten states and he's the chief head at the top so this is a prophecy um, speaking through to that time 
and it's also speaking as Isaiah is also speaking here of the time in the kingdoms of that day the Babylonian kingdom to, to be established well that was established and it had fallen had come to a crash how thou art fallen from heaven O Lucifer son of the morning how art how 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 art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations for thou hast said in thine heart i will send up in i will ascend into heaven i will exalt my throne above the stars of god i will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north i will ascend above the heights of the clouds i will be like the most high yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Right, I'm going to stop pause there. Um, I will say, verse 14, this is what Satan said in his heart in the before creation, before any of us were ever born, before this earth was ever created. Um, this is what the Lord is revealing through Isaiah of that, looking back at that time. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. So in heaven, we had this um, Son of the Morning, which is a, a spiritual creation of, of God, an angel of a heavenly host, a Son of the Morning. And he, now, all, all the, uh, there's only one God, if we, we, you go through all the prophecies as Isaiah. Um, uh, uh, I think Isaiah 42 covers that there's no um, Jose, there's no God besides me, no, not one. There's only one Lord, there's only one God. And uh, let me find a reference quickly. Ooh. I even I am the Lord beside me there is no saviour that's Isaiah chapter 3 I even I am the Lord capital L capital O capital R capital D and beside me there is no saviour I have declared I have saved and I have showed when there was no strange God among you, therefore ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and I am God. There's many references of the Lord saying, declaring, there is no God, and beside me there is no God. Verse 6, Isaiah 44, Thus said the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, that's Jesus Christ, I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. So, Throughout prophecy, um, you can't have two gods. So this angel, in his heart, I will be like the Most High. He wanted, he, he wanted to be like the Most High, which cannot be possible because if if you got two Most Highs, you you wouldn't have, you'd ha you know you wouldn't have had you wouldn't have been created in the first place. So there's that, there can only be one truth, there can only be one God, there is no God beside the God that that is, and the, the God that, there, that, that came to the earth, the Lord Jesus Christ, the, 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 the testimony of God, God's Son, His beloved Son, who, who revealed His victory by on the cross and appearing to many people from the grave. He, his law is a straight line all the way through and he's accomplished it like he said he would accomplish it but here we're looking at the heart in satan and why he fell because he wanted to take the lord's place and the lord couldn't have that iniquity so the lord banished him from from heaven cast him out into the earth and this is where he wanted to deceive the nations with that same spirit to draw men away from the most high because they want to the world's teaching that whatever whatever lick you put on it whatever language whatever flavor you give it it's the same spirit you'll see this manifest throughout society throughout our generations the same antichrist spirit the same iniquitous 
proud spirit and it'll come in the form of goodness, it'll come in the form of religion, it'll come in all different guises and disguises and this is the heart of Satan in man. I will I will be like the most high. If you look you look throughout the sixties, oh I am God, you know, these te these philosophies, these new age gurus teaching uh oh, you know self meditation to reaffirm to yourself that you are a God, you know, in in a capital sense rather than you are a a, a God in the uh, lowercase sense where you're you you've been given dominion over the um the Lord's creation to govern it, to have a, um, to be head head headship over not the human race, but over equal over the human, you know, uh, equal in the hu human race. But you have a responsibility to look after creation, look after the animals, and and look after the the land because of sin and weeds and and problems. You got to, you got to keep it you got to keep it in check. Because of the fall, so nature is fallen, the world's fallen, so we get wheat, we get, we get weeds, we get tears, we get opposition, so the ground had to be worked, it had to be heavy labour to get anything on top of anything, to prepare the soil, to, to cr create um, an abundance of the good seed that the Lord uh, provided in, in creation in Eden. And then the corrupt that comes amongst it, and you know the weeds and the uh, all the offshoots from that, and uh, so we have this spirit going uh, going free uh, the whole world. Uh, let's get return to Isaiah uh, chapter 5, uh, fourteen, verse fifteen. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the side of the pit, that they they. S they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake the kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness, and destroyed the cities thereof, and opened not the house of his prisoners? All the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, every one in his own house. So we see this time in the, the, the uh, fall of Lucifer, that all the kings are set up, you know, they sit in all the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory. So they just sit around doing nothing, basking in the glory of everything, while the world suffers. And this Antichrist, uh, this uh, Lucifer in this physical Antichrist figures, destroyed all, every city in, around the world. All the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, even one in his own house. Let's return to verse 19. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch. And as a remnant of those that are slain, thrust through with a sword, that go down to the stones of the pit, as a, a carcass trodden under feet, thou shalt not be joined with them in burial, because thou hast destroyed thy land, and slain thy people. At, at the seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. Prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. For I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name, and rem the remnant, and remnant, and son, and nephew, saith the Lord. I will also make it a possession for the bittern, and pools of water, and I will sweep it with the besom of destruction, said the Lord of hosts. Verse 24. The Lord of hosts have sworn, saying, Surely as I have fought, so shall it come to pass. And as I have purposed, so shall it stand, that I will break the Assyrian in my land, and upon my mountains tread him under foot. Then shall his yoke depart from off them, and his burden depart from off their shoulders. This is the purpose that is purposed upon the whole earth, and this is the hand that is stretched out upon all the nations. For the Lord of hosts hath purposed, and who shall disannul it, and his hand is stretched out, and who shall turn it back? In that year that, the, uh, that King Ahaz died was this burden. So we're talking about a pro the Lord speaking of a prophecy through this king, and he's speaking through to the end times. So we're getting it. The last verses, 29 to 32, 
referring to those last times. Verse 29, Rejoice not thou, whole Palestinia, because the rod of him that smote thee is broken. Um, that's, I believe that's Christ, uh, because the rod of him that smote thee is broken for uh, on his cross, uh, which is, um, For out of the serpent's root shall come forth a cockatrice, and, and his fruit shall be a flying fiery serpent. Now I believe that's the prophecy of the Antichrist. Um, because of the Saviour's um, rejected comes the prince the uh, not the not christ the capital p prince of peace and prince of love but the the wicked prince who comes to rule the the nations in israel and i purposely i believe he is from the seed of israel um however he's manifest whether he's a clone or whether he's a um a fallen man that chooses to go and take and reject Christ and 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 worship um, vanity and and indirectly Lucifer completely is overtaken and possessed by Lucifer and the same pride and arrogance and spirit that Lucifer has and and for out of thy serpent's root shall come forth a cockatrice and his fruit shall be a fiery flying serpent and the firstborn of the poor shall feed and the needy shall lie down in safety and I will kill thy root with famine, and he shall slay thy remnant. So that's the prophecy of the Antichrist destroying the poor, tra um, conquering the world, take you know, over, trying to trying to own the world, given over you know, given power to go and uh, anyone who any rebellion, he's going to go and try and bring it down. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot a lot of opposing against this force, and he's going to be dealing with it. And the firstborn of the poor shall feed, and needy shall lie down in safety. Um, I, re I believe that's speaking to Israel, uh, referring to Israel. And I will kill thy root with famine, and he shall slay thy remnant. So he is, Lucifer wants to kill the seed of Israel. How, how, O gate, cry, o, cry, O city, thou whole Palestinia art dissolved, for there shall come from the north a sm a smoke and none shall be alone in this appointed times when shall one then answer the messengers of the nation that the Lord have founded Zion and the poor of his people shall trust in it so the Lord's gonna by this wickedness and by this e events happening and, and the Antichrist take, trying to conquer the, the seed of Israel the Lord's already prophesied that he, and he's already conquered it on the cross and uh, and the realization is going to be a, a testament to all the Arab nations, Palestinians, which Palestinia was, uh, you know, goes back to the Roman times, the palace, you know, the Philistines, and and during the Roman occupation of Jerusalem, and after Christ's crucifixion, there was an uprising after the, uh, the priest apostatized and fell away. There was a, a rebellion in in the town, a fallout between Caesar and and the Roman governance and the seed of the Jews, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the the order, the establishment of their order. There was a a, re, a falling out and a rebellion and an uprising against the by force tried to take over and reconquer their land but that was crushed that was stamped on and all the seed was scattered out pushed out the land permanently and then that Roman governor who if you do your history that Roman governor named the land of Israel the land of Canaan that, that the Lord gave to Israel and promised Israel all throughout the scriptures um, let's go to just Genesis quickly I think it's Genesis 15. So I looked it up this morning. Uh, is it 16? Um, and I will make um, and I will make the exceeding fruit 
exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee, and I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee, in their generations, for an everlasting covenant to be a, a God unto thee, and to thy seed after thee. And give unto thee, and thy seed after thee, the land where it, wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, Canaan, or Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore thou and thy seed after thee to their generations. This is my covenant, which which ye shall keep between me and you, and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. So that was the, the promise given to Abraham. The, the, the first covenant, the old covenant, the Abrahamic covenant, which was broken, which we the Lord prophesied to Moses would happen and Zechariah reveals the actual, that, uh, that break and that covenant being severed by the re rejection of Christ. So the Lord kept his half of the covenant and restored it to the, in the new, rewrote it in a new everlasting covenant on conditions of repentance and faith in the Son. Kiss the Son lest he be angry, all ye nations. The, the wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. Kiss the sun, you know. So the Lord has stated throughout the scriptures of this iniquity and the promise, the Abrahamic covenant. So in the times of um, the rebellion after Christ's uh, death, burial and resurrection and the falling away and the scattering of Israel, the Roman governor named the land Palestine, Palestinia. It's a Roman name given to uh, the land of Israel, and to, to that was Satan working through the minds and hearts of every man to rewrite history that Israel does not exist. It never existed. It's Palestinia and it's the home of the Arabs. And all these surrounding nations push these Arab people into the land and tell them it's their land, it's your land, it's your land, playing this double speak. And Israel gets the blame, gets the uh, finger pointed at it. You know, they're the, they're the bad guys. They're the ones who wrote the uh, the Protocols of Zion. Well, that is actually not true. The people who wrote the Protocols of Zion wrote that to p pin it on the Jews, to stick that on the back of the Jews. Punch me, you know. I am I am the wicked conspiracy. Now this wicked conspiracy plays out in all wicked men, and the Jews are the scapegoat because they're they're out of the way and it and satan hates that that seed and he wants that seed destroyed because it's god's seed and it they're the promised seed through the promised seed come christ and through the promised seed comes um the faithful little group in jacob's tribulation or the unfaithful you know or, or the innocent faithful of that period who do not accept They'll be right in the centre of Israel and Jerusalem and they do not accept this. They do not accept this system. They do not accept the Antichrist. They do not but there's a compromise in the world, so they're they're buried amongst this. And all the political noises establishing up this iniquity, coveting it for itself. This is not solely the Jews. That, but this is happening within the Jewish nation, within the lives of these people. And, and it's it's all on the earth and it, the establishment is all raised up in the same iniquity and it's that evil that is the conspirators it's, it's that those people who want who use that as an excuse to put the heat off of themselves to put the focus away from themselves onto the bogeyman whether that's the jews whether that's the arabs however it lies however it's going to play the deceptive game it's going to cause amongst all people all nations lies and deceptions and this is all happening because of this iniquity set up um, so we see it quite clearly throughout the um, Holy Scriptures. 
excuse me. Um, I'm going to read it, go back to um, the Song of Moses, um, where I started at the beginning. And we know that the, um, I've already read the prophecy in, in that time, that the, uh, the, the seed of Israel, the faithful seed, uh, are going to be singing this song and or well, this this law it doesn't whether it's a, a a song or whether it's um a written um song if you like of a, a record rather than uh an account not a, not a lyrical with music but possibly it will be and maybe there is a um a nursery you know a traditional nursery rhyme or song that's gone throughout Israel included this testimony to remember for the seed of Israel to remember this what the Lord spoke to Moses on that day in Joshua in the tabernacle amongst the congregations about the covenant being broken against the song of the last days for the hope of Israel in that who have find themselves in that period who realize that they are in that period that they consider that all this evil that's crept up around them is because they've rejected their messiah they've rejected the lord and their covenant and that that will be ready there to plant it in their hearts to to help them take hold of this situation that the Lord is still stretched out for those people that the Lord's spirit still lives although that the, the covenant's been broken and this evil's come about this little quiet people are going to be still and they're going to be restored to the Lord and, and saved through that period that Antichrist is not going to be able to touch them and then the Lord is going to smite that Antichrist and all the, all the kings and nations who follow after him and give him power and out of compromise and their glory you know they're puffed up in their own um they all lie in glory uh because of this this force that that little band of people in israel are, are going to be safe and then that all that power is going to crash down the lord's going to deal with it in its order and then finally satan's going to be cast out he's going to be thrown alive into the lake of fire with the false prophet um, and everyone else is going to go down everyone else is taking the mark and part of the mark it will go down to their grave in their own time and then they go straight into hell and follow uh, the fate of that um, that seed that antichrist person um, Right, the Song of Moses, uh, chapter 32, Deuteronomy. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My, drop, my doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. Because I will publish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock, his work is perfect, for all his ways are judgment a god of truth and without iniquity just and right is he they have corrupted themselves their spot is not the spot of his children they are a perverse and crooked generation that's the whole world do the, do ye thus requite the lord o foolish people and unwise is not he thy father that have brought thee have he not made thee and established thee Remember the days of old, consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will show thee thy elders, and they will tell thee. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people, according to the number of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people, Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about, he instructed him, he kept him as the apple of his eye. As an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings. So the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. He made him ride on the high places of the earth, that he might eat the increase of the fields. And he made him to suck honey out of the rock, and oil out of the flinty rock. 
butter and kine and milk of sheep with fat of lambs and rams the breed of Bashan and goats with the fat of kidneys of wheat and thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape but Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked thou art waxen fat thou art grown thick thou art covered with fatness then he forsook God which made him and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation they provoked him to jealousy with strange gods with abominations provoked they him to anger they sacrificed unto devils not to God to gods whom they knew not to new gods that came newly up whom your fathers feared not of the rock thou begat thee of the rock that begat thee thou art unmindful and has forgotten God that formed thee and when the Lord saw it he had adhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters and he said I will hide my face from them I will see what their end shall be for they are a very frower generation children in whom is no faith they, they have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God they have provoked me to anger with their vanities and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation for a fire is kindled in my anger and shall burn into the lowest hell and shall consume the earth with her increase and set on fire the foundations of the mountains I will heap mischief upon them I will spend my arrows upon them they shall be burnt with hunger and devoured with burning heat and with bitter destruction I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them with with the poisonous serpents of the dust the, the sword without and terror within shall destroy both the young man and the virgin the suckling also of the man of grey hairs I said I would scatter them into corners I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely unless they should say our hand is high and the Lord have not done all this for they, for they are a nation void of counsel, neither is there any understanding in them. O ye that were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. How should one, one chase a thousand and put, to, and put ten thousand to flight, except their, their rock had sold them, and the Lord had shut them up? For their rock is not as our rock, capital R, for their rock, lowercase r is not as our rock capital r even our enemies themselves being judges for their vine is of the vine of sodom and the fruits of gomorrah their grapes are grapes of goil their clusters are bitter their wine is the poison of dragons and cruel venom of asps is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures to me belongeth vengeance and recompense their foot shall slide in due time for the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come up upon them make haste. For the Lord shall judge his people, and repent himself for his servants, when he seeth that their power is gone, and there is none shut up or left. And he shall say, Where are their gods, their rock in whom they trusted, which did eat the fat of their sacrifices, and drank the wine of their drink offerings? Let them rise up and help you, and be your protection. See now that I, even I, am he, that, that, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive, I wound and I heal, neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. For I lift up my hand to heaven, and I say, I live forever. If I wet my glittering sword, and my hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to mine enemies, and will reward them that hate me. I will make mine arrows drunk with blood, and my sword shall devour flesh, and that, that with the blood of the slain and the captives from the beginning of revenges upon the enemy. Rejoice, O ye nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants, and will render vengeance to his adversaries, and will be merciful unto his land and to his people. And Moses came and spake all the words of this song in the ears of the people, he and Hosea, the son of Nun. Hosea, the son of Nun, is Joshua. Interesting. Right. Um, and Moses made an end of speaking all these words to all Israel. 
And he said unto them, Set your hearts unto all the words which I testify among you this day, which ye shall command your children to observe to do all the words of this law. So whether it's a real song or whether it's um, a written song, for it is not a vain thing for you, because it is your life. And though this thing ye shall prolong your days in the land, whether ye go over Jordan to possess it. And the Lord spake unto Moses that selfsame day, saying, Get thee up into the mountain at Abarim, unto Mount ne Nebo, which is in the land of Moab, that is over against Jericho, and behold, the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel for possession, and die in the mount whether thou goest up. And he gathered unto thy people, as Aaron thy brother died in Mount Hor, and was gathered unto his people. Because ye trespassed against me among the children of Israel, at the waters of Meribah Kadesh, Kadesh, in the wilderness of Zin, because ye sanctified me not in the midst of the children of Israel. Yet thou shalt see the land before thee, but thou shalt not go thither to the land which I give the children of Israel. So we see this uh, Moses given given this prophecy and M Moses punished for not glorifying the Lord amongst the amongst the nation of, of Israel and his punishment was to die and see the children go into the land um, but but because of um, the mercy and righteousness of Christ it, um, Moses is referred to as being faithful amongst all his house so even Moses' sins were put right by by the atonement, by the Redeemer. Anyway, we see the prophecy of Israel's unrolling throughout their time, throughout history. We, we see this uh, wickedness set up, these strange gods. So I want to briefly just give, my, give some thoughts on our modern day. So the Lord's speaking for a whole host of people on many things he's speaking to the faithful the repentant the wicked um, the apostate Israel the apostate nations of the earth the kings of the earth the rulers of the earth and the, and the coming peak of that kingdom of Lucifer and the Antichrist in, in Jacob's trouble where he's going to surround Israel the Lord's going to judge Israel and he's going to judge, judge the nations. And we're, t we're looking at all those different groups. The Lord's speaking, pouring water out of his mouth. And it's like, if what the cap fits, what cap fits, wear it. Because it's speaking to a whole diverse group, all in one sentence. And you need the Holy Spirit to be able to pick out who is who, and what is what, and when is when. Because it's a prophecy of the Lord's eternal knowledge of in like a click of his fingers he, he, he can compute the whole existence of the human race and how it's going to end and he's written it in these lies he's revealed it through his son who was not iniquity there was no injustice in him and he hated iniquity and he loved righteousness and we have that faithful record and, and that invitation like the Lord said who can who can hold back my hand from being stretched out upon all the nations upon Israel and every nation today to warn people about this iniquity set up so let's have a quick look at the modern idols today now we know we have testimony of people being deluded in, in celebrity pop pop culture we, um, someone in demons someone in spirits Seeing apparitions, being deceived by the Antichrist, through, through whatever way he deceives an individual. And all these individuals have got their own religion, their own belief. They might believe, oh, I, I believe in this religion, I believe in the, the Cabal, or I believe in the mystery religions, and I, I believe in New Age mysticism, or I'm this group, I'm Wicca. I'm all, the, all these hybrids, are all... All deception, all the same deception played out in a different colour, different flavour. But it's simply that same deception through rejecting God. And these are the fruits. And from that fruit will come the cockatrice and the fiery flying serpent. So amongst that oik will come this antichrist. And that oik are the, 
the Jesuit, the Illuminati, the Masons, all, all the, all the um, apparatus that raises up these spiritual uh, leaders and gurus and gods who, who, who lead people astray and set up these group images and iniquitous. And then we have these bigger players that control these iniquitous groups and, and their game is, is, is monopolising. Um, so we know there's all these testimonies. If you just do some research, you see that there's witches, there's high priests, there's masons, there's Je ex Jesuits, um, witches, covens, satanic bloodlines, families, cult groups, religious cult groups, spiritual cult groups, paganist cult groups. There is so much wickedness done on that you you wouldn't you wouldn't see it all in you wouldn't study it all out in a lifetime there's so many different branches of this same iniquitous heart and that is lucifer that is the king of this world that's the prince prince of evil uh, lowercase p the wicked prince and that's the spirit that's working through men's hearts because every man has rejected christ so we get these um you get Hollywood and you get all the same doctrine, the doctrine of devils, the philosophies of men lived out through this medium. And that medium is, because of the truths we've held from the general populations and they're pumped, this medium and this image is played into their life, people take nourishment from that. It's that the Lord says there'll be a famine, a spiritual famine, a physical famine. That they they're not they're not reading the word of God. They're not studying the law, the heart, mind, and will of God. They're rather going after their own gods, whether that's uh, fame, whether that's achievement, whether that's a, a vain ambition in your in your life. You know, it could be so many different manifestations on so many different levels. It's all set up in iniquity, and these are strange gods. And we have Hollywood creates this voice on the stage and then the generations grow up falling in love with this image and this idol and then their children are impressed by it and it generationally is the image set up and you're born under this iniquitous world and you're looking up to these celebrity idols oh you can only there can only be one there can only be one famous football player there can only be one famous team pick for the the championship league where only one of those teams can be the the champions you know, and then it all goes round in circles and they all, musical chairs and they all take up the seat of the champion. It's all vanity, you know, not every young aspiring footballer, you know, even better footballers than there are in the world aren't going to get picked because, you know, there's not enough, there's not enough to go round for everyone to have a seat on the top. Can't all be famous ballerinas or artists or poets or authors or whatever it is in the image setup and those people are helped up you know talent spotted and these people are helped up on them placed on the top of their field you know whether that's an author whether that's a pop idol a musical idol and they've all got their own little religion to go with it their little babylonian culture and their, their little trinkets and their little uh symbols and tattoos and marks and signs that they like to give that they're part of that image that part of, they're the end you know they're that spirit and they're all completely deluded they're all completely don't talk to one another and compare notes and realize that they're all part of the same deception and it's so obvious if you look that there are so many contradictions that they're all governed by the same force anti-christ anti-law anti-government anti-establishment you know they even get in the establishment and it corrupts the establishment and tries to break down the establishment from the inside the nations around to take away justice to take away truth to take away you rewrite history we've got all this and and all the culture grows up following after the same illusion delusion an image and they say that our oh, computer games don't have an impression on people. Um, videos and films don't have an impression on people. Well, they do have an impression on people because people aspire to it. And people pick their little favourite line out of a film that has some philosophical, you know, it tickles their philosophical, philosophical fancy. 
and they're raised up in that pride in that um, for rejecting the truth and the truth has revealed all this iniquity and sin but they can't see it and they and that's um, a hard thing to grasp that um, when 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 that sight's been given to you when that sight's been afforded you and you can see it and then you can see how you couldn't see it you were just as blind and blinkered as the rest of the world because you have the truth's been kept from behind your back now the truth's there and the truth's always been there we have that psalm 12 where the lord's faithfully preserved his word his law through the prophets through all the writings through the holy scriptures through the lives of christ through the lives of the apostles and all the writings and the revelation we have the faithful record that god is true god is faithful god is consistent and it's only through that that light that you can see all these iniquitous kingdoms because you may be able to see them and not what part of it but if you don't know god you're lost so if that if that's you and you're listening you you know there's only one god that can restore you to that truth and to know god will be to know you were lost and now you're and then then to be found and to know you're found and 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 between those two contrasts there's it's either one or the other and and a lot of these um you either know god or you or you know of know of god and these luciferians these witch covens all these different groups who make sacrifices to devils to idols whatever their image is set up whatever their little vain belief is and they make sacrifices a commerce a sacrifice is made over commerce all things in this world are sacrifice music the sacrifice is made over it as an offering to empower the world to empower the the, the image set up and to have an effect on people and to raise up this image and this anti lumpy unequal playing field and that's the image uh, Simon Cowell and X Factor is a classic example and it started to be introduced with the time of Big Brother because Big Brother shows the Big Brother the force behind it playing with people's lives and started to muck around people's lives and playing on people's naive ignorance of who those powers are behind that invite them into these platforms that are staged and carefully planned and it's a psychological profiling of human nature and it's a work in progress so this program reveals all that spirit coming into the into the mainstream conscience of everyday life and then we've had all these virtual you know these celebrity uh counseling programs these you now they got um there's a classic one today of a, a camp judge who who they've put this camp proud little arrogant feminine bloke on the on the judge seat with a with the qualification and he judges people's matters and uh, that that they haven't found success in a, a people's you know injustice so they go to a people's court and this little fairy judge rules over them judge and jury you know and, and they they trust these people and they trust these things and it gives it life it has an impression on people who who watch it and people like some people like to watch this sort of drivel and you get all these images set up and uh, x factor is another one and if you um study anything about freemasonry you'll see that simon cowell before he become you know um, a head guru in the music producing industry and then he come on to do his own tv show come up with this idea x factor to be to to pit you know already have a record deal they just want to find the person to come and fit the mold you know, it's a, it's a a Masonic craft at work, and you can see it. You can see Simon Cow going through his initiation before he was there, going up through the initiation, the humiliation, and going through the layers of the craft to show that he was um, accomplished in his craft, and now he's at the top of his game. He's he's playing people on the stage. He's raising up this. He 
uh, this calculated plan that the record deal set they just need to find the gullible people then they make entertainment out of these people's lives all in the name of oh we're good family value entertainment you know but it's all getting these people in one thing there only can be one winner x factor you're either if you haven't got the x factor you're a loser just go home and kill yourself you know that's the kind of culture it, it generates oh no you got to, if you want to be the best you got to do all this rubbish and all this and you there can only be one what he's actually saying if you want if you want to be the best you got to jump through all the masonic hoops if you want to be the pop idol you got to jump through you got to jump up through the carrot and pull your pants down and humiliate yourself you've got to sell yourself you got to show the world you're selling your soul you got to show us that you mean business then we give you a job. Then we let you have a record produced. You know these people dominate. Uh, it's the same with Hollywood. If you want to get a film on the mainstream, you got you got to go up against the chief players. If you want to get your music on the table, you got to go up against the chief pay people. And if they don't want your music, if it's going to rattle their feathers and be against all the other little happy little idols on the world, if you're going to go against the status quo, you're not going to get a record deal. You're gonna you're gonna be producing your own music, and you're not gonna be getting any played. You know you're gonna have to do a lot of hard work and to get to get known. If you're just doing it, and you would if you're if you were truly righteous, you wouldn't be doing it. You know to, for, for fame, you'd be doing it with a, a cause, a just cause. So you'd be founded. So then, therefore, you wouldn't be making any money. Therefore, you wouldn't really have a world popular following like these images like pop idols like bands the beatles the doors the led zeppelin and throughout the ages you get all these modern idols you know madonna and britney spears and all all the whitney houston and every you know throughout music history you get all these images raised up and it's the same craft the same spirit working through that craft of people in today's and we and it seeps through into the religious realms uh, the ecumenism they they follow the image and they try and you know um be the holy and the now next to it but they're all affected by the same image this iniquitous this hierarchy which christ done away with on the rock and they're they're impressed by the world and they rub shoulders with the world they don't speak out against the world so to the public they don't look part of the world because they're religious they believe in they've got you know they believe in god but really they're, they're not speaking out against it they're just as guilty for not speaking out against these people and then they're quite happily to share bank accounts with these people and and invest in enterprises with these people and get yoked and compromised by these people and therefore they're controlled by these people not necessarily being told what to do but by the circumstances they find themselves in they can't act because their hands are tied and if they speak out because they're compromised they're going to get point the finger's going to point at them they're going to go oh, look at those hypocrites over there and it's going to cause a fallout now satan doesn't want a fallout he wants this deception to so these people get on with one another and they're two-faced and double-hearted you know they probably speak you know, I hate those celebrity people and then the celebrity people oh, I hate those religious pious idiots you know and it's this f false image set up in the world and we see it throughout religion the world and like the Lord said all those who take part in this iniquity are going to be judged and they're going to go if they die in their sin they're going to go to hell and that's the same with people who anybody who tolerates it and sees it going on and does nothing against it and they're they're, they're going to be judged by it as well because they're they're just as guilty for you know whether they're having anything to do with it it's because they've rejected jesus christ therefore they're not against it the only way you can be against it is is be born again and receive the the uh forgiveness of jesus christ for your sins and then that will he will spiritually separate you 
from your sin, from your nature. He gives you his nature, his heart and his mind to see these things. Only then are you empowered by his righteousness to see it for what it is, iniquity. And it's been there from the beginning. It's so simple. But yet the world is so deceived by this fallen image, this, this spiritual demonic entity working through the hearts of man. This is the mystery of iniquity. And it's done, whether that's done by a few at the top conspiring and then the conspiracy born up within the hearts that follow after these images set up by Satan ambiguously, vicariously and by design, by the hands of his servants, by a certain individuals that serve Satan and knowingly serve him. They don't knowingly serve his full plan because satan is fallen and deluded by his own vanity that he wants to uh, replace god and so his kingdom is going to come to a collapse because god has revealed this god created satan god created lucifer god created the earth and god created mankind and uh, and god has written the fall God has written his purpose. God has stated what his purpose is throughout. From beginning to end for mankind to be redeemed, to be saved from this wicked sin and from this force, this demonic force. And, and all the Lord wanted from the beginning was obedience. Just to love God. Just to put God first above all these things. And that's a simple truth. Um, I'm going to read, go back to finish off with Psalm 2 again. Uh, Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and take, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh, and the Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath, and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my King, Christ, upon my holy hill of Zion, and I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto thee, Thou art but my son, this day have I begotten thee. Um, that was testified in the Apostles by um, John the book of John, that many people heard the Lord, their father speak uh, these words, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. This is my beloved son, who I am well pleased. This is the father speaking of his son, and it's spelt with a capital S. I will declare the decree the Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thy inheritance, and as uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear, and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son, capital S lest he be angry and ye perish from the way, when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Amen. So there we have it quite clearly from when were the Psalms written? A long, long time ago. I don't know the date. But this is the, the Psalms of Israel and King David and, and others who uh, wrote a spiritual impression of their hearts, of their through their emotions, through their experience, through their bad times, through their good times, through their rejoicing, through their res restoration from sin, back into fellowship with God. This is the whole heart, mind, of will of God throughout the Holy Scriptures, like I, I read in Psalm 12, how the Lord preserved it from beginning to end. And how in the last days, in our modern day, Israel scattered, Israel is just as guilty as the rest of the world by being raised up in this image and I'm not talking all individuals because there's always individuals that are separate and faithful but trans are transgressing so you've got two two uh, divisions in transgression you, and then you've got um, 
Israel and the rest of the world. We've got the Lord's focus on Israel and the rest of the world, and then what's going on in this is Israel is going on in the rest of the world, and what's going on in the rest of the world is also going on in Israel. But they're a separate people. They're the, the heart, the apple of his eye, and they will always be. And in the last days, the Lord's going to come and destroy all these things. Now, holding up this, um, I'm going to put my hand under the, the ball bearings you're looking at, there's um, one of those powerful magnets uh, which I brought to represent uh, Lucifer. So that's what's holding this image up. So I'm going to remove it now of my hand. You'll see, you'll see uh, the movement. And I'll try and pull the ball bearing away. There we go. And that's what the, whoop, that's what the Lord's going to do in the last days. Restore these people to there. Uh, because the Lord's people are his brethren, they're in the, the children of Israel, the Lord's inheritance. The Lord's going to break down all these uh, wicked kingdoms. Uh, Lucifer's going to be destroyed because he, he was beaten on the cross and his tie. And the Lord has allowed this um, wickedness to continue because of the sun's been rejected. All this iniquity was set up. And that iniquity set up is going nowhere but its own self-destruction. And that's how the Lord's going to judge the world in Israel. And, and uh, he's going to restore Israel to, oh, we would just keep her as a sheep, you know, from our from our youth. We don't, we, 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 we're not prophets. We're not anything. We're just the Lord's children, right? And this is the, what we're looking at here is... Um, the redeemed of Israel, but we're also looking at, um, you can see this in the Christian, the uh, church age, the, the seed of Christ, who have been, uh, received the promise that Israel rejected. So uh, throughout the scriptures, you've got those who've received the promise, those who were um, gi given the promise to come and kept in in the promise until the promise came then then those who received the promise after he came jesus christ this is my commandment believe in the lord jesus christ that's his commandment in the beginning it was um don't eat the tree of good and evil knowledge uh, and then we see mankind fell because it because of a sin because uh, uh lucifer entered into the garden to see deceive mankind and the uh so the pattern continues and then it happened in christ's time and then it happened um it's happening today and, and we're, we're coming to the crescendo the the building up of that kingdom these kingdoms are established these kings sit lie in glory and uh they sit around the table together they're double-hearted and then you've got all these you know, it's ripe for the coming of that period, the Antichrist, and Israel are out of the way. These prophecies are going to be fulfilled. There's not going to be peace on earth. Mankind is never going to restore peace on earth because they've rejected God. Who can, t who can say in their heart to God, roll over while we, you know, you turn your back, Lord, while we, uh, it's our, you know, we're going to rule. We're going to show you how it's done. No, the Lord's turned his back because the world's turned his back on Israel. But his hand stretched out to every single soul to receive him, to kiss the son, to believe in Jesus Christ, to repent, confess your sins that you're no good and that only Christ is, only God is righteous, only God is good. And to, and to fear God and to seek his mercy and forgiveness and salvation and then be restored and, and grafted into God and um, come into the, the fellowship with the Lord and be saved. And that's the fate that Israel are going to be tried through the fire because they're not going to um, accept this Antichrist, <coughs> excuse me, the beast system, they're not going to take the mark. But they're going to be uh, faithful to the promise of their father. They're going to be turned around and restored. Now, that will be with the help of possibly the two prophets. Well, it will be through the testimony of the two prophets. I, I don't know who those two prophets are. Some people suggest it's Moses and Elijah. I, um, I personally believe it 
it's Elijah. I'm not. I'm not a hundred percent sure of it. It's Moses, because Elijah's promised to return to that, to those people before the great and dreadful, dreadful day to restore restore the hearts of those seed, back to the hearts of their fathers, which they've astray from and they've forgotten because history has been written over the truth count continuously like the devil spewed out a flood out of his mouth like he's gonna spew out a flood in the last days to rewrite the truth rewrite our history you know the the victor writes history and then that history is taught taught to the people grow, growing up in that generation you're taught what history is what they want you to believe it is and when you revise history you find that it's a load of lies and uh, you know the truth's been available f and, and cried out and testified from the beginning and that's the fate of all iniquity and that's just simply the mystery of iniquity and the victory of that iniquity by the Lord Jesus Christ uh, I'm going to close there and uh, wish everybody well and Maranatha and I'm going to close now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.